Edward Everett Hale said, quote, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. What I can do, I should do. And what I should do, by the grace of God, I will do. You know, you've heard of the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have done unto yourself. Well, that's essentially, I mean, if, if you didn't want it, I mean, if you know about something, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. Now, a lot of people won't receive this type of truth, but I believe it's still our, our obligation to warn them. It's kind of like being in a burning building and um, not warning them of the impending disaster that's at hand. A lot of times people will not receive this type of information. The Bible says in Galatians 4.16, it says, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? And that's unfortunately what hap is happening in this day and age we're living in. So while the globalist elite are accustomed to putting the entire world on notice as to what they are planning for them, they typically do not communicate the exact times that their plans will be carried out, and they do not want the motivation behind their agenda exposed either. That's why I have a closed door there on that slide. John 3.19 says, And this is the condemnation that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. We're talking about dark stuff today, evil things. And it's hard for people to comprehend how people could possibly be potentially so evil, and we really haven't even got into that yet. The reason that is is because men loved darkness rather than light. Men and women that are part of this. Because their deeds were evil. The Bible says, By their fruits you shall know them. David Rockefeller speaking of darkness, founder of the Trilateral Commission in an address to the Trilateral Commission in June 1991 said the following. There's a picture of him. We are grateful to the Washington Post, the New York Times, Time Magazine, and other great publications whose directors have attended our meetings and respected their promises of discretion for almost 40 years. Now right there we can just see that the mass media is absolutely in cahoots with the global elite because, well, essentially they're owned by those same global elite as well. He goes on to say, It would have been impossible for us to develop our plan for the world if we had been subject to the bright lights of publicity during those years. He said it would have been impossible. But the work is now much more sophisticated and prepared to march toward a world government. End of quote. Pretty bold statement. But again, this isn't the stuff you see on the front page of the newspaper, or nightly news, things like that suppressed. Now the avian flu drug and the Rumsfeld connection. There's um, Donald Rumsfeld flashing us the Cornudo sign, Hail Satan sign, in front of the Pentagon. The drug company that created Tamiflu being touted as the only effective weapon against the spread of avian flu has a little publicized link to the Bush administration. Donald Rumsfeld was the company's chairman. Rumsfeld served as the head of Gilead Sciences, Inc., from 1997 until he became Bush's Secretary of Defense in 2001. Gilead licensed the drug to Roche for marketing and Roche announced Tamiflu's first approval in 1999. Isn't that cozy? This article was from The Independent in the UK. It was entitled, Donald Rumsfeld Makes a $5 Million Killing on Bird Flu Drug. <coughs> from this article we read, Donald Rumsfeld has made a killing out of the bird flu. The U.S. Defense Secretary has made more than 500 million in capital gains from selling shares in the biotechnology firm that discovered and developed Tamiflu. The drug being bought in massive amounts by governments to treat a possible human pandemic of the disease. End of quote. Sales of Tamiflu are reportedly projected to reach 1.1 billion this year. But Tamiflu may not be the anti-flu panacea it's been cracked up to be. Fortune magazine reported that recent studies show that Tamiflu may have lost much of its effectiveness against avian flu. As we'll see, it really never had any. Not against H5N1. Eight of ten victims in Vietnam died despite getting the drug. So many are becoming highly suspicious of the continued touting of the drug. Now remember before, I said the kill ratio was 56% on humans that have contracted H5N1 bird flu. Well, in this particular case, we have eight of the ten victims in Vietnam dying despite getting the drug. 
Well, the kill rate without Tamiflu at the time was 56%. But in this particular instance, it would have been 80% kill rate when they got the drug. So it doesn't sound like it's too effective to me. Dr. Marsha Angel, Harvard senior medical lecturer and former editor-in-chief of the New, New England Journal of Medicine, states in her book, quote, The Truth About Drug Companies, in two, and there's a picture of her, in 2002, the combined profits for the 10 Fortune 500 drug companies was $35.9 billion. This figure is greater than all the combined profits for all the other 490 Fortune 500 companies put together, which was only $33.7 billion. So we're talking massive, massive money. And remember, the love of money is the root of all evil. In reference to the pharmaceutical industry, Dr. Angel states, quote, Now primarily a marketing machine to sell drugs of dubious benefit, this industry uses its wealth and power to co-opt every institution that might stand in its way, including the U.S. Congress, the FDA, academic medical centers, and the medical profession itself. So this is a, a particular uh, doctor that was at a very, very high level and is exposing the pharmaceutical industry now. So besides population reduction, the financial motivations for the globalists are crystal clear. Hey, it's great if they can depopulate the planet and get rich at the same time. This is from Washington Associated Press. This was entitled, FDA Looks into the Pediatric Tamiflu Deaths. Federal health advisors are looking into the deaths of 12 Japanese children who took Tamiflu. An update by the FDA staff also includes reports of 32 neuro psychiatric events associated with Tamiflu, all but one experienced by Japanese patients. Those cases included delirium, hallucinations, convulsions, and encephalitis. I mean, where do I sign up? So not only so far preliminary does, is the kill rate worse if you take the Tamiflu, but now you have to worry about the neuropsychiatric events as well. Tamiflu is, this was from the Science Daily from London, Tamiflu is useless for avian flu. There's another picture of avian flu under an electron microscope. Medical experts are stating categorically that the Roche pharmaceutical wonder drug Tamiflu is, quote, useless in treating or combating the avian flu virus. Yet this is the very thing that our country is stockpiling. It's useless. Medical experts are saying this. Dr. Ningen Tuan Van of the Center for Tropical Diseases in Hanoi, a Vietnamese doctor with experience in treating avian flu, which is, you know, there are not a lot of doctors that have that. She says, Tamiflu had no effect on the patients suffering from H5N1 bird flu virus. It said they had no effect. None. We placed no importance on using this drug on our patients, she reportedly told the London Sunday Times. Now, this isn't me saying this. I'm not making this up. This isn't some, something I'm concocting. This is what the experts are saying. We don't have any experts in this country that's actually worked, um, or at least that we know of, that has actually worked on H5N1 firsthand because we haven't had an outbreak here yet. Tamiflu is really only meant for treating ordinary type A flu. It was not designed to combat H5N1. End of quote. That's from that expert. This statement comes in the face of recent announcement by several nations, including Britain and the United States, that are stockpiling doses of the drug as a future safeguard against mutation of the H5N1 virus when it begins. The Bush administration is reportedly spending several hundred millions of dollars stocking Tamiflu. They are still doing this just saw another article the other day that said they're doing this. Yet, it's categorically been stated as it's essentially useless against the avian H5N1 bird flu. And if it's useless against this strain that hasn't mutated human to human, it's really going to be worthless 